Hi everyone, welcome to Outdoor Bound TV. I'm Kurt Walbeck. Well, we're still out here on the ice, but many times this time of year, we start thinking about warmer weather. Well, on this week's show, we get a chance to experience some warmer weather. We're headed to the state of Arkansas. Now, first, we're going to try to intercept the snow geese as they make their annual migration north to Canada. So let's get out all the decoys, hop in the blinds, and see if we can catch up with some of these snow geese. Hey guys, I'm Trey Steckety with Top Gun Guide Service. We're out here in Northeast Arkansas for the spring snow goose conservation season. Uh, we found this feed of birds yesterday and we came in here after dark, set this spread. We're hunting over a flooded rice field. It's kind of a weird pinch point. We got the panel blinds here on this levee road T almost. And there's a couple feeds around, so hopefully we get birds bouncing around all day. All right, so currently the, uh, all the birds are in a feed just to the north of where we're set up, probably about half mile. And yesterday they were hopping around quite a bit. So we're hoping that with those birds being there, we could pick off birds as the day goes on, hopefully get a couple big spins, but it's looking pretty good as of right now. So we're here in the uh, Arkansas spring conservation season. Uh, license wise, you go online. It's like a free registration permit that you get. You don't need your migratory bird stamp or any of the other stuff that you would for a regular duck hunting license. There's no bag limit on these snows during this time of the year and you can make modifications to your shotguns. Uh, some people get extension tubes, you can run up to 10 to 12 shells. Otherwise, some people just take their plugs out. That's fine. So this spring conservation season is a perfect time for us as hunters to try and bring the population back down to a, a reasonable balance the best that we can. Well, next we head north to the Ozark Mountains. We're gonna be meeting up with our good friend and guide, David Caps from the Fisherman's Lodge. Now, David is famous for trout fishing on the White River, probably the holy grail when it comes to trout fishing in North America. We're gonna be after rainbow trout on this trip. So let's jump in the boat and see what David has up his sleeve.
everyone today we're on the white river in the ozark mountains of northern arkansas we're here with our buddy david caps we had an opportunity to fish the white river with david a few years ago and uh, we're down here in this area of the world and called david up and said hey how about getting back on the river and he was gracious enough to take us out today you know we came out this morning i think it had froze last night here in arkansas it was probably about 30 degrees and a little bit of frost on the windshields and you know, this late February sun, it really warms up pretty quick. And boy, I tell you, that sun is warm and it feels really, really nice about now. They're predicting uh, highs in the mid 50s today, which is pretty common for this area of Arkansas in the winter. When you can be on open water in February, it's a nice change of pace. Fish on! <laughs> he hit it hard. Boy, and that was instantaneous. You were exactly right. That's as the way soon it's as it hit. Work. <laughs> fighting these fish, isn't there? Oh, there <laughs> Alright, I'll bring them up to you. There he is. Awesome. Boy, that was immediate. I tell you what, as soon as that egg pattern hit the water, he was on it. He was on it in a hurry, wasn't he? The reason I, I use these rubber gloves when I'm, I'm fishing these salmon eggs is they're, they're really oily, cholesterol-like membranes in it, and, and it, it dries and cracks my hands. And it, it kind of, it, of course, it smells fishy too, which I am a fisherman, but uh, sometimes the wife doesn't want me to smell quite that fishy when I get home. So I use these gloves, and, and it, it just keeps the mess down, keeps the stuff off the, off the rods and whatnot like that. Boy, that sun is starting to warm up nice. It looks like it's going to be a gorgeous day. That one is rainbow trout body. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the temp up home about now? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I've, I've heard today that it's in the high 30s, so oh, it's actually a pretty nice day. There it is. Fish on. And another rainbow. I tell you what, these things fight. Shaking. Fish. Simple setup. These eggs single hook and just a kind of a bell sinker. That's all we're doing. And as soon as it drifts into that pocket where these fish are, it's game on. Freshwater shrimp, see them on my finger there, mm -hmm. or what's left of them. Piece up in a hurry. Okay, let's catch another one by a gully. <laughs> you normally want to catch it on that first bite, or do you want to give them a little bit about before the third? You... Okay, about, about the okay. third is usually about right, unless they're just really, really pulling hard on it.
Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Rapala and PK Lures. Just kind of throwing this right into the seam of the current, so I'm not even really casting it. I'm just kind of slinging it in that current, and these fish are laying right below this kind of this ledge. And... <laughs> yeah, I awesome. love these. I love these trout. Think I'm right out of the water, you know. <laughs> Typically, what age group would you anticipate that fish at? Oh, this little guy right here. That's a, that's a little river spawn rainbow, and he's probably a year old. A year old? Okay. <laughs> probably a year old. <laughs> nice, nice, beautiful stripe on him. Pretty fish. <laughs> You've got an X on the water there, Mark. You know, and they seem to all be in that same place. Now, like you said, they may be following it a little bit before they hit it, but yes. it, you can pretty well watch that line, and when it gets to that one spot, you're pretty well assured they're going to hit. Yes. Well, and two, that's a nice fish. Two, what we have here is we have our pocket that sits here, but if you look down river, you see kind of slick water. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a, a ledge here and a ledge about 10 feet out, and it's probably five or six feet deep in there. It's a trough that runs down. Sure. And this is one of the one of two shoals on White River that has characteristics like that. So the scent, as we're catching these fish when they're fighting, when they're coming in, the scent's going everywhere. Loose eggs are going everywhere, and it's rolling down through there, and and they're taking note. So mm -hmm. we're having, by now, we're having new fish move up here too. Maybe a big fish. Yep, felt a little better. Even actually taking a little bit of drag. <laughs> Rolling a little bit up here. Yeah, he is. Rolled up in the line, didn't he? He did. There we go. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Pretty fish, good quality rainbow. Come here, baby. Come on up out of there. There's a There you go. Pretty Arkansas White River rainbow. Probably 16, 17 inch fish, looks like. Well, he left a little slower, he kind of dropped, but. Nice fish, Kurt. Hey, Kurt, you're, that was on your hook. You remember the catchfly chrysalis we were talking about? That's what this is. This is an engineered home of a catchfly larva. <laughs> he built this home uh, through uh, chewed up plant matter and excreting it out. And I assume they must have some sort of a glue, you know, that helps hold it together. But that's his house. He'll live in that for about a year. And I think this one has one in it. Uh, they're they're just a small little bug, but they've got some pretty good sized wings on them. Yeah. They? Interesting. And they'll they'll hatch by the millions. They will. They will. So similar to mayfly hatch, something like that, in some of our freshwater lakes back in the Midwest. Yeah, similar, except typically it goes on, uh, on for a lot longer. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, years ago, 
in the White River, your caddis, your caddis fly hatch wouldn't last, but maybe a week or two, you know, if, if that long. And, but the White River system, if you think about it, since it was impounded in 1953 by Bull Shoals Dam, it's a fairly new ecosystem, you know, because it changed everything. Thing. Uh, and now, uh, every year, the caddis hatch gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Some, some days to the point to where you're afraid to open your mouth. Really? When you're talking, you got, you got to be careful. <laughs> but uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous food source for the trout that are in here. I came back up river. And I was, there, hey, yeah. that sounded good. We like, hit it a lot harder than the other yes, ones. I don't know if it was just a real act of rainbow or what. Maybe, but. Com maybe competing with another <laughs> fish out there. Sometimes I, he was pretty aggressive. He's not a big fish, but <laughs> he's probably the aggressive one of the bunch. He just he wanted it. Yes, he did. No messing around there. He just flat out wanted it. Right in the corner of the lip. Good rainbow trout. just those memories over a career that you think about that make it, you know, noteworthy in your own mind anyway. There we go. Okay. Ooh, ooh, there, ooh. he tipped it. <laughs> I think this is five fish in a row. <laughs> five casts. It's just great. If he was a stalker uh, put in from the Game and Fish Commission or by the Game and Fish Commission, he wouldn't have that pretty a color. He's not old enough. He wouldn't have those perfect fins because they wear those down in the uh, concrete tanks that they raise them in. They'll regenerate them after a while, but there's always an irregularity where it comes out of the side of the fish on the pectoral fin. It'll go from a nub and it'll grow out little little bit of fin, a little bit more, a little more, and then but where it comes out, it doesn't have those good straight lines. You know, that fish was pretty as a picture. And, you know, he grew from an egg. Because uh, mm -hmm. we do have natural spawn. That's great. Which is really good. Natural spawn with all the species or just in rainbows? Just uh, rainbows and browns that I'm aware of. Okay. I don't, I don't believe that the cutthroats and the brooks do any spawning. Uh, we have a, another fish in here that's, that's a game and fish put in you know, a couple of years ago. That's a hybrid that's a cross between a brook, brook trout and a brown trout. It's called tiger trout. And it's possible we may catch one right here. every cast into this hole. We pull the fish out. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Venom Outdoors and Mountain Dew. You know, what a great escape heading to Arkansas in the middle of the winter. I think I wouldn't mind being there right now. You know, having a chance to chase some of those snow geese around in the central part of Arkansas is a ton of fun in the winter. If you're interested in going down and hunting with the guys at Top Gun Guide Service, all their information is on the screen. And then the White River, well, what can you say? David Capps is an absolute legend when it comes to trout fishing. And if you want to fish with him or stay at the Fisherman's Lodge in Carter, Arkansas, his information is also here on the screen. Give him a call. I'll guarantee you'll have a great time. And we hope that you'll join us again here next week when we'll bring you more great hunting and fishing action from around the U.S., around Canada, and around the world, right here on Outdoor Bound TV. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Suffix.
and VMC hooks. We can't do this right now. That was for all the viewers to show you how not to net fish. <laughs> I'm Trey Stackety with truck with God, God dang it. Oh, I can't talk about this though. <laughs> A waterfowl guide's diet consists of coffee, energy drinks, fast food, or whatever's the easiest to make. And a little sweet tea and yep. cornbread. Yep. And four hours of sleep. Outdoor Bound TV is brought to you by Yakima Bait and Tooth Tamer Rods.